In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the toolpath tiling feature, which is used when the size of the part you want to create exceeds the workable area of your CNC machine. In this demo, we will be showing you the feed through option, where one of the axes exceeds the workable area for a long mantelpiece job. So let's begin by going to open an existing file. And for this project, we're going to be opening the toolpath tiling 3D project. Let's open up the job setup form to show you the dimensions of this project. And as you can see, this is 72 inches by nine inches in height. So this is quite a long job, whereas my machine will only support up to 24 inches in length or width. So we're going to have to break this project down into smaller pieces so that I could actually cut this out. So let's close out the job setup. And let's have a quick look at this in both 2D and 3D. So you can see what we're working with. As you can see here, we've got this oak leaf design that'll be carved into a mantelpiece as part of a large project. It's got some intricate 3D detail. And if I switch over to the toolpaths tab, you can see here we have a 3D roughing and a 3D finishing toolpath to cut out this project. So to go about breaking this down into smaller tiles for our toolpaths, what we need to do is go to the tiling toolpaths option here. Once I select this, you can see that it brings up the toolpath tiling manager. From this, it'll allow us to define the size of our tiles and how we want them to be processed. While this form is open, you can fully interact with the rest of the software as if it was completely normal without any interruptions. And if you want to hide the tiling toolpath manager, you can click on the hide tiling toolpath manager there. Let's bring that back up again. Now, to activate the Tiling Toolpath Manager, you just need to turn on the Tile Toolpaths option here on the screen. From there, you can then choose what type of uh, tiling effect you want on this. And in this video, we're going to be going through the Feed Through X tiling options. In my case, my machine can support having a plank of material pushed through along the X axis without any interruptions from the physical hardware of the machine. If you had a machine that was set up so that the y-axis was unobstructed for a plank to be fed through, you would need to rotate this project 90 degrees and do a feed-through y project instead. But for now, we will continue with the feed-through x. And as my machine is a 24-inch square machine, I'll set the tile width for x to be 24, which will match the dimensions of my machine. And now I have set that value, I can now click on Update Tiles. As you can see, my 3D toolpath is now only showing a small section of the overall toolpath. And in the 2D view, you can see that I now have got T1, T2, and T3 in the middle of these representations of where my tiles are. I can switch the current active tile by going to the T value on the middle of each tile and then double clicking. And as you can see, this updates the 3D view as well to show the active toolpaths that are on this tile section. And you can turn on and turn off any toolpaths to show them in this preview, just like this. You can also choose to use the Drawing Toolpath Active Tile drop-down menu to select which tile you wish to be shown. So I can flip between them using this with ease. So now if I go across to the toolpath preview, we would go about cutting this out on the machine in a little something like this. So first of all, we'd have our mantle of material secured to the machine. We would have it so that the XY0 is located here in the corner. And we would set up to carve both the roughing and the finishing toolpaths. So if I preview all of those toolpaths, we'd cut our first tile like so, and it would look something like this. Then we would uh, remove the material from the machine and move it 24 inches along, re-secure it onto the machine, and then we'd load our second tile's toolpaths. Now, when I then preview all of these toolpaths, you can see how these were then cut out on our machine. And then we would do exactly the same again. So we would remove it from the machine, move it along 24 inches and re-secure it back down again. And then we'd load tile 3's toolpaths 
and cut each of those in order again. So you can see we've managed to produce a full mantelpiece for our project from one piece of material, but using only a machine that is only one third of the width of the material. You can also do this with three separate pieces of material if you do not have a long plank of wood to cut out this whole project in one piece. You would then have to join them together later on once you've carved out all three pieces. So this would look a little bit more something like this. If I turn off the original position and I just then cut tile one, you can see that's my one piece of material on the machine. I can then switch to tile two, preview all toolpaths, and then I'd put on my third piece of material and cut all of the third set of toolpaths again. And when you're tiling a toolpath, you are going to be setting it up so that the toolpath uh, will end at the very end of the tile. So the tip of the tool will reach the centre of this line here and then stop, not going any further beyond it. Now in some cases, the tool properties will mean that you'll want to overshoot very slightly so that that way each part of your tiled project will meet up as cleanly and evenly at the join lines to make sure that you're going to get the exact results you're looking for. You can use an overlap to help with this. So the tool overlap option here allows you to have the toolpaths extend beyond where the edge of their tile would normally allow. Uh, this will mean that uh, any tools which are going to cause problems in this, such as V-bits, will overshoot slightly into the space beyond the tiles material and this will help give a clean finish result. And you'd normally set the tool overlap to be about the radius of the largest tool you're using. So 0.25 in my case. Now if I update the tile, preview this again, you can see I've got tile one here. It doesn't make much difference in this situation, but if I turn on the tool view here, you can now see that the toolpath is extending very slightly beyond the edge here, only a quarter of an inch. And if I zoom in on the 2D view here, you can see this red indicator here, which is to show the extra overlap that it's causing with this tile overlap option here. In some machines though, such as the one that I'm going to be using in this case, the machine's maximum limit is 24 inches. So actually I won't want to have a tile overlap here because this extra distance would actually push me beyond the physical limitations of my machine. So I would have to settle for a zero inch overlap and keep it as that. And as you can see here, as I turned it off, this cut back by that quarter of an inch. Now, before we go on to saving these toolpaths, I just want to show one more thing which is the draw toolpaths in original position for visualization option. Currently with this turned off, if I switch tiles, you can see here that they are all appearing here with the XY datum right in the corner, which would match the machine that we're going to be using. So this would be the position you'd want to actually have it on the machine relative to the machine's XY zero datum. To help visualize it with the project as you're working on it here in the software though, you can turn on this option and you'll see the full piece of material uh, which you'll be using and how the toolpaths will work in relation to that material rather than the actual machine. There is still this line here, but that can be ignored for the moment as uh, we are faking its position in the 3D space just to give you a sense of where it is in your overall project space. So you can use this to help design and set up your project. And then you can turn it off to see the actual small piece of material tile as you work on each of the three parts. So let's see the full piece of material once more. And I'm just going to hide the tiling tool manager. And now we can move on to actually saving these tool paths. I'll start just by making all of my tool paths visible. And then I shall go to the save tool paths form as this is a design that has had the tiling already set up in it, the software automatically knows to enable the output tile toolpaths option. This can be turned on and off at will, 
but the software will warn you if you try to turn it off when it's expecting you to need it. You can click OK to bypass this, however, but for this example, we will keep this turned on. We are going to be outputting visible toolpaths to multiple files so that the software will look at both of our toolpaths and output both of them at the same time to their own separate toolpath files. I make sure that I've got my correct machine and post processor selected for the machine I'm using. Check the full toolpath saving guide for more information on this subject though, and then I can just click Save Toolpaths. And at this point, I can choose a name for my toolpaths for this project which I'll just call Toolpath Tiling. And then just click Save. The software will automatically save out all of my toolpaths for me, and they appear in my Windows folder that I selected to save them into. Now, as you can see here, there are more than just the two toolpath files. We have three toolpath files for each of the toolpaths, and they have been prefixed by T1, T2, and T3 to indicate which tile these toolpaths are for. So as you can see, I have three roughing toolpaths and three finishing toolpaths. So I would just need to run all of the toolpaths for tile one on my first piece of material, then move that material further along the machine, run all of the toolpaths for tile two, and then repeat the same steps again for tile three and that will complete my project for me. And this concludes our video on 3D toolpath tiling. We've covered how to take a basic project, which is set up for a piece of material which is longer than our machine, and apply tiling to it to allow it to cut out in separate sections of a suitable length for our machine. We then covered how to preview this and confirm that everything is working well, and then save those toolpaths into the separate tiled toolpath files. Thank you for watching this tutorial.